doing? All right, how are you? Very good, thanks. I left the boat ramp about 10 minutes ago. It's 10 minutes after 7 on the 10th of December 2019. And I'm heading out into the middle of Lake Washington. And there's a couple of people out here fishing, but that's about it. And that's where I'm headed, right up there in the mist. And this guy, uh, actually in that boat right there, we had about a 20 minute conversation at the boat ramp. I, I really didn't want to, but he gave me some good advice on where to find pigs. Says he sees them up where we're going all the time. And I've actually never been to this stretch of the St. John. So uh, I've been in Lake Washington a number of times. Uh, this is where they killed the longest alligator in Florida state history in this lake just about, I think about six years ago. Uh, they caught a heavier one, killed a heavier one up in North Florida but the longest one, this one was uh, nearly 15 feet, and they killed it in Lake Washington, right where I'm floating. <laughs> so uh, I've come in here before and seen hundreds in a day, but mainly on the West Bank over here, which is real remote. So we'll see what happens. It'll be an adventure. Nice calm water out here, I'll say. It's, it's about the calmest I've ever seen Lake Washington. Now I've been caught on this lake in some terrible thunderstorms with white caps on the water. So I've made it to the northwest shore of Lake Washington, and uh, this is not a good area for game. There's pigs and deer in here, but there's indeterminate shoreline. You have marsh that comes out from the actual hard pan, maybe 100, 200 yards. So nothing's going to be out here in all this grass. I'll give you a look, but uh, there's game in here. There's quite a bit of it. It just it comes down to the water, but what you see right there is not the water's edge. That's just where all the vegetation comes out. But uh, I was looking at it with my binoculars to see if there was any uh, beaches, any sandy areas, and there's not. So I'm going to proceed up here around the point and cross the dam. Okay, so I just uh, exited Lake Washington to the northwest, and I'm back into the beginning of the St. John's again. And uh, straight ahead of me is the flood control dam between the northwest side of Lake Washington and the St. John's River. It's getting into a pretty wild area here. Um, once we get, now I've never paddled, I paddled up to this dam before, but I've never gone across it. But once we cross it, we're in a, a very remote area, perhaps the most remote area of the upper St. John's River Marsh. But this area up here, I'm not sure what to expect. I've looked at it on Google Earth many times and I've talked to people. They say it's uh, full of deer and wild pigs. So we'll see what we see. It's a beautiful osprey up there on top of that pool. Alright, coming up on the dam up here. So, uh, actually this is kind of funny. I didn't perceive this as I was approaching. I'm like, oh, I'll just go right between these uh, buoys and right through. And then I realized there's a waterfall. There's like a drop off right there. So I'm going to go over here and go up the airboat ramp.
All right. Now we just have to get over this, and we're in the uh, we're in the river. Holy crap! I just pulled up. I just made that video and said, "Okay, we just have to get over this, and we're in the river." And I noticed this thing as I approached, and I said, "Is that an alligator?" No. I pull up alongside it, and it's a dead pig. And that thing is fresh. I mean, it's just dead. It's uh, it doesn't smell or anything. <laughs> That's what we're looking for, folks. We just want one that's alive. But uh, obviously, I'm not going to take that one home. But that thing is uh, that thing has just died within 24 hours, or it would already be reeking. <laughs> Big wild pig. Look at that sucker. The tusky boars, Stu would say. So this is what I almost paddled over. <laughs> That wouldn't have been good. I, it just looked like it was one continuous sheet of sheen of water here, and then I just got right to these buoys and was like, "Oh man, there's a drop." But sometimes in the summer, the water's so high you can paddle right through here. And now we're in an area I've never laid eyes on other than Google Earth. And uh, this is where we're headed. This is the St. John's River again. And uh, it goes for about, I think about eight miles and then it hits Lake Winder, seven or eight miles. And uh, it hits the next lake to the north downstream is Lake Winder. So I just uh, stopped here, just 100 yards down from the flood control dam, and camming up in the front of the canoe and loaded the rifle. So here we go. Don't, don't go away without me. That wouldn't be good. i would be in here for days before anyone finds me. Come on, Bessie. There we go. All right, nice alligator. <laughs> there he goes. It was a beautiful pink roseate spoonbill. Bright pink one. <laughs> Hi there, yellow eared slider. Hi. Oh, you are There's something else. Oh, there you go. There you go.
That was a commercial airboat operator. Uh, I'm not familiar with the different companies, but on the side of his airboat it said Bull Gator Adventures. And he was real courteous. He slowed down and went to the far side of the river for me. So if you ever get down this way, check out Bull Gator Adventures. Well, it's about 11 in the morning, and uh, I was paddling down the St. John's and looked over and saw this flat area with mud and a bunch of tracks in it. So I went ahead and beached the canoe and came up here. There's all these tracks. They're all bird tracks. <laughs> you know, they're from vultures and blue herons and all manner of birds. But no pig tracks. It's kind of discouraging. Looks like a great spot. And I mean, look at this surrounding terrain. It's just, it's what wild pigs love. Low shrubbery, flat, lots of water, lots of things for them to eat. If I was a pig, lots of places for them to hide. If I was a pig, this is where I'd want to live. Far away from predators and man. And oh, the ground, you take like four steps here and it's solid, and then you just sink like halfway up to your calf, like the fourth or fifth step. That's Florida. So anyway, uh, keep at it here. Keep heading downstream. I'm going to have to pull against the current on the way home. And the way the wind is, I mean, it's pretty twisty here. So, you know, a southeast wind might be a headwind at one point, might be a crosswind at another. But uh, I'm going to have a headwind component on the way home, and that sucks. I hate that, especially when I'm paddling upstream. <laughs> there was one slithering into the water about 30 yards ahead of me, and I looked down at the bow, and that guy came up. He was as surprised as I was. one just went in. And they were all hanging out right by those birds. That's crazy. Those birds are braver than me. Much braver. He's a big one. He's about a 10 footer. I'm getting rocked by his waves. Oh, 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 oh. that rocked the canoe. I do believe the bow of the canoe touched that alligator.
see you later, alligator. <laughs> People say uh, an alligator has the, a brain the size of a walnut. Well, so does a chihuahua, and they're very smart. It's not the size of the brain, it's the, the cognitive ability and the way the brain is wired to do certain things. A chihuahua is much more intelligent in some ways than an alligator, but I bet you there's some ways that an alligator would score higher. That they're, they're so much more intelligent than any other reptile. They recognize people, they exhibit curiosity, they, uh, sometimes they come up to me and they, you can, you can, I swear you can tell by the look in their eye. It's not that cold reptilian stare. It's a, you gonna throw me a fish? It's like if I was, you know, looking at my parents before Christmas Eve, wondering if they'd bought me that Red Ryder BB gun. I can, I swear that I can sense that in them. And then other times they give you that look that's just like a shark's eyes. It's just cold, lifeless, frightening look. But uh, they have alligators exhibit a maternal female alligators exhibit a maternal instinct that would put many mammals to shame. I mean, they will protect their young, stay with them. They sit by that nest for however long their gestation is, a month or two, then the eggs hatch, and they carry, they scoop the babies up one or two at a time and carefully carry each one down to the water while they ow, 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 ow. drop each one into the water, go back, pick up more, bring them back until they've gotten all 20, 30, 50 hatchlings, and then they stay with the young for uh, a period of time. I've heard like a year or two and I've heard other people say it's like a few weeks and the babies swim off and that's that. But I think they stay around their mother for quite a while because uh, pretty much everything eats young alligators out here, even these birds that, oh my goodness, look at that guy right there. I'm sitting here yapping. Look at him. Look at him sitting there. Is that a seven footer? Definitely enough to take my arm off. Hey there, fuzzy. Hi. See if we can dance. Wanna come over and say hello? Uh, he's definitely interested in me. Hmm. Oh, well, I was you know, trying to sneak up on him and not having that much luck. And I pull my face mask down, start running my jib, and that guy swims right up to me. I didn't see him too, it was weird. You know, he was getting a little close, but, uh... but anyway, alligators have a lot of intelligence that people don't give them credit for. Big buzzards right there, waiting for me to get killed so they can peck at my bones. You're ugly birds, yes you are. You're ugly. You aren't afraid of anybody, that's for sure. It's funny how vultures aren't afraid of people. Every other bird runs for its life when you come near. The vultures just look at you like, looks like some nice white meat. Hey, fellas. See you later. They're really pretty when they fly. You see that pink on their underside and on the top of them. They're, they're a beautiful bird. Their head isn't pretty. They kind of have like a, a buzzard looking head with this weird spoon shaped beak. But their feathers are as pink as flamingos. They're beautiful birds, especially when they're flying. saw something run into the brush right here and I caught it out of the corner of my eye just as it disappeared in there. It was making noise as it ran back through the foliage. I, I, it was black. <laughs> it was almost certainly a wild pig. That was my one chance. 
for a shot. I've been on the water since 7 a.m. and uh, it's uh, 3.45 right now. So it's at eight and a half hours and I just blew my one chance besides uh, grabbing the dead pig. <laughs> but I could have made that one dead if I'd seen it in time. But I was making noise. I was banging around trying to paddle against this headwind upstream and wasn't really thinking about pigs anymore. I was just counting the number of bends until I got back, keeping an eye out for them, but not hunting like I had been the first five or six hours, you know, quietly paddling and watching every little cane break and everything. But there it goes, that's hunting for you. I mean, especially pigs, they're super nervous and they're smart animals. And uh, I was, the one thing that this headwind helps is that I'm downwind from anything in front of me. And you know, something behind me, I'm not gonna see it anyway. It will smell me and run off, but who cares? I've already passed it. But if I encounter pigs or deer on the shoreline up here, I've got a 15 knot wind coming right to my face. And they're not going to uh, know I'm there unless they hear me or see me, which is the case here he either. He probably heard me because like I said, I was moving the tripod and hitting the side of the canoe with a paddle, which I don't do when I'm hunting, but when I'm trying to paddle in a hurry, I don't, I don't really care. So that sucks, but that's hunting. Well, I made it back to the dam at Lake Washington, and it's uh, just as the sun's uh, going down behind the trees there. And I still have to portage across, and then I've got about a two-mile, about a two-mile paddle back to the boat ramp. Load it back on the car, drag myself home, and go to bed without a pig. Thanks for coming along. So it's 5:15 p.m., and I made it across the dam, and now I just have to go across Lake Washington to the southeast and uh, load the canoe on the car and go home and crash. I don't know how long that was, but uh, prob I'll measure it when I get home. I know where I turned around and left some markers on my on the, the maps function, but I'm guessing it was 18 miles. I went almost all the way to Lake Winder and back, uh, but I didn't go quite to Lake Winder. I, I stopped a mile mile south of it about. So again, I'm guessing I did about 18 miles. It was a long day and that headwind just kicked my ass on the way back. That was not cool, but now it's real calm. But uh, Sun's starting to go down. It should be a beautiful sunset tonight, but it won't be for about another 45 minutes. But I'll get back right at dark and I left right at dark. <laughs> Any second sunset? And I went out under a full moon, and I'm coming back under a full moon. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm going to get back before dark. <laughs> Maybe 15 minutes after dark. I got to try and get back before dark. Stu tells me that's when the zombies come out. 